have to get you these rankings. Top 10 teams through week four of the NFL season. Here we go. Uh, so the Arizona, no, I'm just kidding. We should put Arizona in here. I'll tell you what. No, 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 no. Just no, kidding. No, no, no. At number 10, if you're new here, we always go 10 to 1. At number 10, the Los Angeles Chargers. Um, to me, this is purely a Justin Herbert. You know, we're casting the Justin Herbert vote. Uh, you could argue me into the Rams. You could argue me into, I mean, not many other teams. Maybe Washington. Mm. Cleveland, maybe. They have a good defense. Those are the honorable mentions there. But we're going to go with the Chargers because Herbert's a really, really good quarterback. And we mentioned that he can overcome a bad coach because I think Brandon Staley is a bad coach. Uh, their offensive line is getting better. They have two really nice edge rushers. So I think Herbert's able to overcome the secondary, which is weak, and then Brandon Staley, who is probably the worst head coach in football. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense for them to be there. They they have so much potential, and they can move up this list really quickly yeah. if they start to gather some wins. But uh, right now, I think the lack of coaching, like you were mentioning, is the reason that they are down this list like they are. Yeah, he's terrible. Number nine, Detroit. I actually think they have a good coach. They play hard for him, and I, I also love Jared Goff. First of all, in the last six years, he's the best quarterback against the spread, so he's criminally underrated. Yeah. They have a very underrated wide receiver one. We talked about Amon Ra last segment. Like, they're they as a team, they have a lot of underrated guys. The team as a as a whole is fairly evenly rated. I feel like most people would put them anywhere between seven and twelve in the league. We have them pretty much dead in the middle there at nine. Uh, the defense is getting a lot better. The, the the draft pick that Campbell, the middle linebacker, has been a lot better for him in the middle. So Detroit's a good football team. Need to see more of them defensively. And then also, you do have the Jared Goff factor. I think he's really good, but he can melt a little bit in big-time games. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. So nine feels right for Detroit. Yeah, it does. Um, You know, I'm I'm glad to see them finally crack this top ten list, though, and, like, kind of start to play better. It feels good. Um, Good for the people of Detroit deserve it. We've been on Detroit for a while, too. Yeah. We, I mean... I like Jared Goff a lot, so. Yeah, I mean, you know he's a big a quarterback. Jer- you know I'm a big Jared Goff hey, supporter. He garners them in number nine spot. Would you put him in the top ten right now? Jared Goff? Yeah. Right uh, now, this season, just this season. Yes. Yeah, I would yeah, too. So far, yeah. Yeah, I would too. No, uh, number eight, Seattle. Um, look, this is not as much about Geno Smith, although he's been a really nice game manager. He's not losing them games. He's getting them in and out of trouble. He's making a couple throws when needed, although he got banged up last game. Hopefully he comes back. Uh, Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet have been the story. The run game is fantastic. Young offensive line that's getting better with cohesion, which is a very cohesive unit, so with time, they are getting better. Young secondary, right? Tariq Woolen, Devin Witherspoon, uh, Jamal Adams, who came back, then subsequently got hurt on the first possession, so he will probably come back very soon. Um, but Seattle's got young guys on the defense, experienced guys on offense, able to run the football. So they're it's a good football team. Young, fast. Pete Carroll coaches well with young teams. He just fits with them. That's why he was so good in college. So, yeah, yeah Seattle at eight. A lot of things to like in Seattle. I think they're going to be real good. Um, we're really good receiving core as well. Number seven, Baltimore. Uh Lamar Jackson, very, very good. Inconsistent defensively, but good enough to win games, right? You don't have to be special on defense when you have probably the most dynamic quarterback on the other side of the football. Uh, they finally got him some help, right? Rashad Bateman, uh, Zay Flowers looks to, like a star. Yeah, that's OBJ's been kind of quiet, but that's okay. He'll he'll show up when needed, I think. Uh, Mark Andrews is a fantastic tight end. They can run the football like they always can. Uh, and then you have a good coach. John Harbaugh's a good coach. Not great, but he's good. Good enough to win games. Good yeah. enough to win a Super Bowl. And I think this is one of those teams that starts to gain momentum and then really start to roll later in the season if they can stay healthy. If they can stay healthy, this is going to be a top five team come it's also, end of October. It's one of those teams where you look up, you're like, wow, they didn't play all that well. They're not that flashy, but they just win. They yeah. just they just win. Every time you see them on the schedule, you're like, yeah. ooh. You're like, Lamar, Lamar wins 75% of his game. They just win. It's just what they do. Dallas at number six. Um, I have serious concerns about their ability to stop the run. I have serious concerns about... If they get down, if they get punched in the mouth, can they respond? They got punched in the mouth by Arizona, and they didn't respond. Dak can't play without a lead, um, and the offensive line is banged up. So I, that, that's the reality of their situation. They're going to beat bad teams. Good teams, though, are probably going to boat race them. Like uh, That's why we took San Francisco minus 3.5. I think good teams are going to kill them, and they're going to kill bad teams. Yeah, I mean, it's... They are so hard to judge. Every time I sit yeah. down and I try to look at the Dallas Cowboys, I can't figure out where to put them... Or what to the say? The defense about them. is elite, though. Defense is elite. Oh, the, the defense, the pass defense in particular. But like the you said, the pass rush, the front seven, they, they really struggle to stop the run. And now Micah Parsons limps off the field; he didn't return. Yeah. So now that's something to look at. Too. I think that was more precautionary. I think so. That's what they hope, at least. Yeah. Number five, Philadelphia. I don't think they've played their best game yet, and they're four and zero. 
Um, this week, like, you let up 31 to Sam Howell. Like, that's not a typical, you know, Philly defense-level performance, although their their past defense has been suspect this year. Uh, Darius Slay has not been playing well. James Bradbury has not been playing well opposite him. The safeties leave a lot to be desired. And no. they lost good linebackers. So uh, the underneath stuff is there for the taking. Uh, but they do have a very, very good front four. And you still have a lot of the, the same firepower on offense, although they're still kind of figuring out their pass game with their new coordinator. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing for defense, too. Like, you have two new coordinators, right? Yeah. Like, this is going to take some getting used to. But while they're getting used to it, they just keep winning. Which it, is, that's the mark of a good team. They find ways to win. Yeah, exactly. And once everybody starts to gel, this team is going to be scary. It's yeah. going to be another Super Bowl contending team. Probably. Number four, Miami. I have very, very serious concerns about Tua being able to play against playoff teams. Um, I mean, those again, are real legitimate concerns. I, if you if you missed the rant that I did at the start of this episode, I mean, he's 6-8 and eight against playoff teams in his career. He's 22 touchdowns, 13 picks. He's completing 59% of his throws. He's got an 89 pass rating. That's in 14 games against playoff teams throughout his career. So that that's just what it is. That's very average. That's very Baker Mayfield pedestrian level numbers. Uh, and that's just not going to get it done in the loaded AFC. I'm sorry, it's just not. And the defense isn't good. So yeah, it's just it's really tough to try to attach yourself to a Tua where like you, you just don't know what you're going to get from them when you get into those big games. How you play in those big games is everything. Yeah. Uh, so if you're not going to be able to compete, if you can't hold up your end there, I mean, at, you, you got to figure it out. I'm with you. At number three, Kansas City. I, I think. If their biggest concern is the pass offense, which I think it's been, the defense has been really good. Mahomes has been kind of shaky. The receivers have mostly been shaky. If that's the biggest concern with Kansas City, I'm feeling really good about myself. Oh, right? like, 100%. They're going to figure it out, and they, they they pretty much are. Travis Kelsey's back and fully healthy. Um, Chris Jones is back and fully healthy. What they've done is they said, hey, we're going to spend money on offense, get the offensive line right, which it is. We're going to just pay Chris Jones. Everybody else is young and cheap on the defense. I get a Hall of Fame head coach. I mean, that's... That's a really good team. At the end of the day, ask yourself this. If you're going into a game against Kansas City, do you feel good about it? Not at all. No. Even if you are one of the two teams above them, you still don't even feel good about it. And that's the mark of a really good team. Yeah. Uh, you never want to see them on the schedule. Uh, they always find a way to be extremely aggravating to play against. Like uh, Mahomes. It's you can take Mahomes. everything away and he'll scramble for 20. He picked up a third and 20 by himself. Um, so, like... There are just so many things that make this team great and so many avenues that they can win. It's uh, They're going to be pretty much forever cemented in the top three, I'm pretty sure, just barring some sort of catastrophic failure. Speaking of multiple avenues to win, I think Buffalo epitomizes that. Their defense is top five in scoring defense. Their offense is top five in scoring offense. Yeah. Uh, so they could beat you defensively. They could beat you with their offense. Josh Allen's a top five quarterback in football. Uh, Stephon Diggs is a top five receiver in football. The offensive line is getting better. The run game is getting better, which makes them less Josh Allen reliant, mm -hmm. which is good over the course of a season. Um, we have our you know issues with Sean McDermott as a defensive coach, but he's got his side of the ball right, and they are playing well. It's one of those teams – if you are not a top 5 to 10 team in football, you are going to get boat raced by this team all day long, every day. Yeah. And even if you're Miami, you're always going to get boat raced by them. Sorry, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, the Bills are finally looking like they can kind of compete and go down the stretch, right? Like, if they can stay healthy, if they can keep everything as it's going right now, you keep that defense elite, you keep that offense taking the big shots, but also being extremely efficient and being able to just... Uh, just go down the field and put together 15, 16, 17 play drives and score. Um, th that's the way to win in this league. And they're showing that, you know, they're back. I think they have like kind of the same structure as the Chiefs, except they actually have better weapons. And I would say more. Yeah, I'd argue that. They have better they have More better consistent weapons, yeah. weapons yeah. too. Yeah, so. I, I agree. Uh, number one, San Francisco. I think they have the best overall roster in football. I think there's, a, there's an argument that they have a Hall of Famer on every level. Uh, like George Kittle will probably be a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Um, if Christian McCaffrey keeps it up, he will be a Hall of Famer. Trent Williams is a Hall of Famer. Fred Warner, if he keeps it up, will be a Hall of Famer. Nick Bosa, if he keeps it up. Like, they have first-team All-Pros at every level of their football team. Yeah. Uh, and Brock Purdy is playing really good. He doesn't have to be spectacular. He's got to be really good, and he is every bit of really good. There's an argument he's a top-10 quarterback. Um, San Francisco is playing good football. They're number one, and I get most likely a Hall of Fame head coach. Right. All right, to walk you back through, we got the 49ers at the number one spot, the Bills at two, Chiefs at three, Dolphins in the four, uh, Eagles at five, Cowboys at six, Ravens seven, 
Seahawks at eight, Lions nine, and the Los Angeles Chargers there in the 10 spot fighting their way into the power rankings this week. Yeah, didn't expect that. But uh, let's, let's 